apostles were guilty of hiding the true meaning of the death of Jesus. The one who called you and chose you from his hands, you won't escape. You are in the hands of God forever. This should arrive here to the epistles of the Apostle Paul. The master builder, he that left a foundation and explains it clearly. Feed on the word, not on what you feel, not in what they say, nor new doctrines or dynamic doctrines. Get into the gospel. Say the word. The written word, the new covenant. of the church. There is no other. Do not wait because there is nothing more. There is no one who can move this foundation. No one can. No one. They cannot. This is forever. The truth of the gospel. The eternal gospel. I receive that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened so you can see who you really are, so you can reign in life. knowledge in your spirit it's what's going to absorb the death soon the transformation is coming we are entering into our glorious bodies the promise that God has for us let's receive it we're going to be transformed it is God's promise in the new covenant promise
grateful to you, O oh Lord. We live in gratitude continuously, Lord. We give you thanks for revealing this science of grace of yours. Thank you, Lord, because in all things we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, for the love you have poured in our hearts. Father, that we can love each other, not knowing us according to the flesh, but by supporting each other just as you forgave us like that we forgive each other and cover our faults to move on. Father, thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who rose from the dead to bring us to life. Thank you, Father. I declare my brothers healed. I declare prosperity in their lives. I declare a spirit of power in all of them. I declare they're complete and that we have wisdom, Father. I receive your wisdom now, Father, to explain this beautiful word. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, 
higher glory. Let's tell the world what He has done for you and for me. We were predestined in His love before any creation, and there's nothing in this world that can rebuke me from His love. And there's nothing in this world that can rebuke me from His love. Hey, there is nothing in this world that can rebuke me. Say, I receive that my physical body in this moment, as it is united to the Spirit of the Lord, the life of Jesus is manifest in my mortal body, and that I am given a new heart, a new liver, a new blood cleansed. I declare myself healthy from head to toe. I say I am healed, that I do not spend money on pills, that I do not spend money on hospitals, on doctors. And now I confess that since you lead my ways, you take me to a new path, to new friendships, and my life begins to prosper and everything I touch, there is prosperity. Direct, O oh Lord, my footsteps. Angels, I thank you. My angel, work in my life. Serve me. That is their job, to serve you. Activate them with your mouth so that your life enters into another glory. Abba Father, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
praise the Lord. Let's give our Lord a great round of applause and let's praise our Lord around the world for this beautiful day that we've been given, a day of praise and glory. Say with me, today I declare the best day of my life, the life of Jesus manifest in my body, rejuvenated, healed in the best of spirits, reigning in life as the first fruit I am in Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a great round of applause and greet your brother and tell him you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Abba Father. Father, let's give the Lord a praise of glory. Praise the Lord, a praise of jubilee. Abba, Father, the gods may be seated there where you're, you are gathered, there at home, to enjoy this beautiful, marvelous banquet. How precious to know that we are privileged amongst millions. He's given us to be the firstborn. He's given us the gift a precious gift, praise God. And we've been enlightened amongst millions to be privileged to receive the mind of Christ, that have heard the mind of Christ. And today we can declare ourselves as the gods we are, reigning in life, always triumphant, not walking as men, but as the gods we are. So today we welcome you to the government of God growing in grace, the government of God here on earth, and we declare a precious day that you are enjoying the best day of your life, healed and in the best of spirits. We welcome you if you are tuning in for the first time through social media, through Facebook, Instagram, through Twitch, Twitter, through our webpage, or perhaps YouTube or Roku. Welcome to the government of God. And today we have great reports, a great banquet. Praise God, get comfortable, and let's take a listen to this beautiful report because there was a feast in Europe. There were gods from France, uh, Italy, and Spain gathered in Barcelona, Spain. Let's enjoy this precious report, Abba Father.
saludo a la madre en todas las naciones, declarando el mejor día de, la part, de parte de la madre de Italia. Estamos aquí celebrando la gratitud Europa 2022 y la mejor fiesta para todos los bendecidos. ¡Ah, ¡Oh, padre! Un saludo de parte mía también a toda la amada mundial. Los amo, los amo tanto. La amada de Francia está agradecida y en gratitud y declaramos que estamos bendecidos con toda la bendición. La Amada de Jesucristo celebra el triunfo de la verdad, declarando a toda persona perfecta, completa y bendecida en Cristo. Y nos declaramos creciendo en gracia y rumbo a la transformación. en todas las naciones un saludo para toda la familia de la fe que nos ven a través de las cámaras de TV Gracia Internacional queremos mandarles un saludo en la perfecta unidad, estamos aquí reunidos los de Italia, los de, eh, de Francia, España todos en un mismo sentir en gratitud a Jesucristo y nos declaramos deudores para que esta palabra corra y sea glorificada y que los escogidos escuchen esta palabra de gracia y sean alumbrados. Somos deudores y recibimos que la palabra corre y es glorificada. Praise the Lord, give the gods there a great round of applause in Europe. Those first fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ that are there reigning, complete, always in the best of spirits, walking as the gods there are there in Europe. The ambassadors of God in this government in those nations. From here, greetings to you, and we declare that the word continues to be spread through you and that you are always prosperous and anchored, always keeping the unity of the spirit. We give you thanks there, all the collaborators there in Europe, France, uh, Italy, praise God, and in Spain. And we want to thank uh, Bishop Marlene and Brother Lewis representing there in Europe, Abba Father. Well, and we have other breaking news of what the word is doing in the family of faith that heard through one of our radio programs, the word of grace and um, one of the family members, a little 10 year old listening to the radio, invited his father to listen in and his father heard the voice of the man, Christ Jesus, But let it speak for itself. Let's listen to the testimony of our blessed brother in Chiapas, Mexico. Take a listen. Ocho 
87.5. Eh, una vez se instaló en el año 2000, 2015 en adelante. Entonces después de eso eh, la señal llegó muy lejos. Alcanzó hasta, llegó hasta la Concordia, sí. pero ahí está un bendecido donde escuchó a través de un monitor, pero ahí está el bendecido, vamos a recibir. ¿Dónde está? Aquí está el bendecido. ¿Está con nosotros? Sí, está con nosotros, bendecido, bendecido, en bendecido. Eh, adelante. Ah, Mejor padre. día, bendecidos. Pues sí, pues yo soy Eusebio, municipio de la Concordia, la de Concordia. Nuevo Jerusalén su nombre la colonia pues sí es cierto a través del radio llegó la palabra y escuchamos cómo fue pues, qué estabas haciendo bueno en ese momento pues nosotros somos campesinos trabajamos en el campo en aquel tiempo entonces y pues mi hijito tengo un hijo pequeño y llevaba su radito en pequeño y pues ahí escuchó y me dice mira pa aquí hay un, un mensaje si quieres escuchar y pues ese día yo me sentía muy triste y pues parece que ya no había solución en la vida y pues escuché el radio y lo que más me, me conmovió más me hizo sentir bien cuando dijo la palabra en una joya de gracia cuando dice que nosotros somos dioses que somos un ángel que no importa nuestro pasado pero él no se fija en él porque Él nos compró en una sola vez nomás y seguimos salvos para siempre. Oh, okay. Y pues el sistema me decía que yo ya no era hijo de Dios porque yo no podía ya estar ahí, por eso me alejé. Pero más cuando yo escuché esa palabra, pues ahí me quedé. Y pues ahorita estamos felices yo y toda mi familia, oh. todos mis hijos. Y también pues ahí estamos Qué todos lindo. los... Ahí estamos escuchando la, los calqueos cada domingo. Ah, pues ahorita gracias a papi también ya levantamos un pequeño centro mm. y a donde estamos estamos ahí anclados Qué y lindo. firmes en la palabra y vamos sí. a seguir este, hablando de la palabra y recibimos que también allá este, va a haber más bendecidos que no van a ser alumbrados y ah, un saludo padre. para la amada en todas las naciones ah, padre Abba Father, let's give our blessed brother Osevio a great round of applause in Chiapas, Mexico. How precious, how precious to know that that work in the Lord is not in vain. That those four frequencies that are transmitting that signal in the heavenly places in Chiapas and crossing the border into the country of Guatemala, the angels take that word and carry it out to the hearts of those that he's predestined to deliver this precious word. And that blessed brother, that child, handed his father the radio and he listened to the word of grace. And today they are prosperous, firm and anchored, the dad and all of his family, Abba Father. Give all of the collaborators there in Chiapas, Mexico, a great round of applause for that great work in the Lord, Abba Father. Well, we continue to embrace this word of grace, Abba Father. We've delivered our heart. We've delivered our minds. Here is our treasure. Here is our heart in this grace. That's why we have angelic coverage. We have not only heard the word, but we've honored it and the angels assist our lives. And that's why they are pleased with us. They touch our pockets. They prosper our lives. Abba Father, how many receive prosperity? Well, let's listen to this jewel of grace as we prepare to sow our seed. Abba Father. Them angels are phenomenal. Listen, what if they touch your pocket? They touch many things. It's a matter of you falling in love with this covenant. Look, fall in love with this. Get a PhD in this knowledge. Confess the word. Even though they mocked you, 
Do whatever you want. You want to party with moderation. You want to enjoy life with moderation. You want to dress well. You want a nice car. What, what things could you not do that would keep you from being submitted to him? Why do you have to be away from the ways of the Lord? Why do you have to stop coming to church? Why do you have to stop tithing if it doesn't suit you? It's to your benefit that you do those little things. He asks you for a little bit and be calm because the angels are in your favor. It isn't only to know grace, it's having coverage. When the things of the world come against you, sickness, bad news, they pass through, but they don't need no print because you are upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. That is your coverage. A blessed sister wrote to me from Tampa, and she says, Apostle, how stupid am I? I knew you when you were, when you begun on 36th Street and I separated for hearing gossip and I stopped coming to church and well, all of my kids are into drugs and my matrimony is going through situations. I'm sucking on a hot wire, as they say here in Miami. But I want to return. You have to be under coverage. It isn't Jose Luis. Jose Luis needs coverage. Not me. I also use that coverage to be able to heal myself, to be able to prosper, to be able to be well, to be able to be in good spirit, to hear the voice of my covering when it says, this is the menu of tonight. Speak about this because this is not a game. You've never had coverage and that starts to manifest because at first, guys, then it corrects. Everything that is wrong begins to correct it. And a year or two go by and you say, man, I started growing in grace and things are going bad for me because there were things that were twisted and correction begins to straighten them out. And things that God is not pleased with and he begins to correct them till he grabs you and your family. And once he possesses you, now the reward. <laughs> Hello, now the reward, Abba Father. Brother, how are you going to miss out on that coverage? You're crazy. I advise you that you don't lose sight of this message. Don't let yourself be weakened by no one, no family, nothing, because you are putting your profit in a broken sack. It's, uh, listen, listen. The apostleship gives you longevity, coverage, blesses you. Why do you want to be without this? This doesn't require anything from you, but that you perfect holiness in the fear of God, knowledge of God, not that junk communicate out there in these religious groups. That is pig food. That's good for nothing. It is the knowledge of grace. The gospel of the uncircumcision, the 14 epistles of Paul, eat them and speak them that your life will be the same. I have a father, take your seed there in your hand and let's confess the covenant. Let's give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. Tell him, thank you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I have your angelic coverage that assists me, that guide me. They correct me, but then they bring reward. I declare my reward. I declare that there is prosperity in my life, in my house. There is abundance that you the angel that serves me, open doors. I declare that I am healed from head to toe, that I am rejuvenated in the best of spirit, that I continue to believe and I continue 
to sow. Come forward and sow your seed and say, I receive the angelic coverage in my service. Abba Father, let's hear this beautiful praise in the lips of our beloved brother, Leito Villanueva. Take a listen. Beloved, today we are prepared for our banquet. Let's prepare our notepad. Get your pen out. Let's get comfortable. Let nothing interrupt you. Let's all be attentive because God is going to speak with us. Say, God is going to speak to me the word that he has chosen for us. And we're entering another glory, Abba Father. The man Christ Jesus in the most recent conferences, he spoke about 
the apostasy, the apostasy for following a different gospel. And there he touched based on the doctrine of demons. He kind of gave us some insight on that of those that continue to speak about demons and that the devil is still alive. That is doctrine of demons. But today the conference is coming in another angle. So let's all prepare to enjoy this beautiful conference. Let's go to this verse there on your screen. Take a listen. Abba Father, there it is. First letter to Timothy 1, 9 through 11. It says, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, and for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. Well, here we have the chart on your screen. It says, the man Christ Jesus edified us in the glorious gospel of grace. How precious to know that the law was not given to us. For us was given the glorious gospel of grace. Why? Because the law did not perfect anything, according to Hebrews 7.19. Number two, Paul served God against the law, according to Acts 18.13. The law was a defective covenant, according to Hebrews 8.7. And God had to open a new and living way, praise God, according to Hebrews 10.20. And last but not least, Christ put an end to the law, according to Romans 10.4. Abba, Father. Abba, Father, how precious, beloved, to know and understand that the law wasn't given for the righteous. Notice that the verse prior says that the law is good if you apply it correctly. But someone may say, oh, let's apply the law. No, but that's why the following verse says, knowing this, we must know this. And it's beautiful and a privilege that the man Christ Jesus explained it to us, explained it to us. And we know that the law wasn't given for us because it perfected nothing. And that's why he put an end to the law. But for us, how precious to know that it was predestined for us a glorious gospel. It was hidden for 2,000 years, but it came to light in the lips, in the mind of the man Christ Jesus to edify us and affirm us in this glorious gospel. We give the Lord Jesus Christ a great round of applause and let's receive these infallible words in the lips of the man Christ Jesus. I have a father. TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Ava Father. Well, then the title for today is What is Doctrine of Demons? Doctrine of Demons. You know that the Bible speaks of doctrine of demons, but one asks, what is that? So I would like to decipher that mystery for your knowledge. For an example, sometimes I notice that there are people who refer to us that we have doctrine of demons. Well, I want to know if this is a doctrine of demons. So when I verify whom has doctrine of demons are them, right? Biblically speaking, biblically speaking, because it has to be biblically. And every time these attacks, what does is help us, right? That's why we can't criticize them nor complain 
they are playing a role and the role is that every time they criticize us well they have us study so we can prove what we are believing so therefore it works together for good right let's thank god for those that persecute us thank you lord for those that persecute us thank you lord for those that speak against us lying right <laughs> Well, let's begin with the first letter to Timothy. First letter to Timothy, chapter 4. It says, now the Spirit clearly says that in the last days, some people will abandon the faith by following deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience sheared forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods which God has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Well, the first thing that we see here is that for you to apostatize from faith, it says here that some will apostatize from faith listening to doctrine. Now, where is it that you listen to doctrine? In a baseball field? In the Lions Club? No, when you go to a church, because if you're going to hear doctrine, it is to say that that is done in a church. Oh, so it isn't demons, pastors with horns and volatile spirits. No, there are demons in the aspect that they are pastors. The demons are the reverence. Because it says that they will depart from faith listening to doctrines of demons. It is to say that that doctrine of demon is preached by a man, a woman, a priest, a pastor, a person that preaches in a church where people go to hear God, but they wind up listening to doctrines of demons. So the first thing we see is that to listen to a doctrine, you have to go to a church. And where they speak of doctrines, it's exactly in temples, synagogues, and religious places. Now, what is the characteristic, this is the second step, the characteristics of a church where a pastor teaches doctrines of demon. Notice that the first characteristic for you to know that in a church there is a doctrines of demon is that they prohibit. How many churches prohibit? In this church, we prohibit that women use pants. In this church, we prohibit that a woman use makeup. There are many prohibitions. In this church, we prohibit people to eat meat on Fridays. All doctrines of demons begin prohibiting. Now, where are prohibitions born out of? From the law. In this case, that we are noticing worldwide on television and through the newspapers is that they've been prohibiting to marry. Now, one of the, and I would say the only one worldwide that for their leaders can minister is that they cannot marry. Apparently, they think that to give a better service or a better communion with God, the person shouldn't marry because if he marries, he has sex, and it seems that for them, sex is bad. When Paul said that let marriage be honorable, now, why all of this is going on amongst the Catholic institution? Because they prohibit to marry, and to prohibit to marry is one of the characteristics of the doctrinal demons. gives place for people with homosexuality. Uh, and I'm not criticizing the homosexuals because they would always be homosexuals and many of them are chosen by God. What I am dealing with here is that this type of doctrine lends itself for them to hide behind that. And to hide there helps them in nothing to the contrary. So then they begin to practice 
violations of uh, children, and not only violating children, but young ladies also, in huge proportion. Because we're not going to cover the heavens with a finger. I recently read that in Honduras, a pastor violated his six daughters, a Pentecostal pastor referring to just one institution, what we're speaking about. Is, and naturally, that Pentecostal pastor, if he's Pentecostal, many things are prohibited amongst that organization. There's many prohibitions. Say prohibited. The prohibit is one of the first clues to forming doctrines of demons because Paul said everything in the gospel of grace is permissible in the gospel in the gospel, it is prohibited to prohibit. <laughs> One day I went to Puerto Rico and there was a blessed brother from our ministry that he would hear my conferences as to how to better the lives of your employees, that they'd be a good environment in the company because he had a lot of employees. So then he understood through the conferences of grace that the problems he had of diplomacy is because of the restrictions he had laid out because you know there are some bosses that say here it is prohibited to do this it is forbidden to drink coffee it's prohibited so he had a lot of problems so one day listening to me he said i am going to prohibit prohibitions so he put a sign prohibited to prohibit so then things began to get better so that has great wisdom. In a church, the pastor that prohibits begins to have problems immediately. I received that the churches would uh, put a sign, it is prohibited to prohibit. Because Paul was the first to say, brethren, everything is permissible. Permissible is the opposite of prohibitions. Everything is allowed, lawful. God doesn't prohibit me from doing anything. But not everything is beneficial because God expects that you exercise the senses of your understanding and without anyone prohibiting you, you reach conclusions in your own life. That is the best thing in life. That is the glorious liberty. Yes, liberty exists where there's no prohibition. And there you arrive to a conclusion. Well, I don't like this. Well, but they don't pride that in church. They don't prohibit me from doing it, but I don't like to do it. But they don't prohibit that you have a glass of wine, but I don't like wine. It isn't that they prohibited me. It's that I don't like it. I don't like this. I don't like that. So therefore, I don't need for them to give me a list of prohibition because everything is permissible but everything that's not beneficial i don't do it without a pastor giving me a list of rules i know a church where it is prohibited for men to sit with women so the men are on the, on the right and the women on the left there is prohibited. And if you sit on the other side, a deacon will show up and say, listen, excuse me, can you move from the woman's side? It is prohibited. And listen, that produces malice because then, why can I sit there? Notice that even evil begun when God prohibited. You know that sin entered the world through a, a prohibition? Listen, take notes of that. Sin begun with a prohibition. Listen, everything was well. Adam was there, I don't know how many millions of years in the Garden of Eden. I don't know how long was he there, but remember, he didn't age. Sin had not entered. Therefore, he was a, an old soul, right? But notice that he had enough time to order the earth. <laughs> Says that the church was a disorderly, and so that man was there for years, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there, but since there were no restrictions, he never noticed until God says, don't touch this tree. That's when it all begun. There are ways to correct without getting to prohibition status. So one of the things in the Catholic institution 
that they've done is prohibited to marry. And what's going on? What are the results of that? That now you see all the scandals that have taken place. And notice that God has allowed that because you know that Rome has to fall, right? That has to fall. Don't you see that that is the organization that has caused most harm on the face of the earth? Therefore, that has to be destroyed. And how is God going to destroy it? Preaching grace and then themselves with their scandals coming to light. They don't know what to do because they resolve 10 lawsuits and another 50 appear. And it says also that they will pry you from abstaining from, from eating certain foods. I remember when at the beginning when I started in my experience in a church, I remember that they told me I could not eat pork. Uh, can you walk the baby? He's, he's crying, but don't prohibit him to cry. It's worse because he'll cry harder. So they prohibited me from eating uh, blood sausage or and I used to go by a restaurant when I was in New York and I would look at the pork and the sausage notice I would be tempted because they prohibited me but I really don't like blood sausage or that kind of meat the beginning I would eat of those types of food when I was younger because our parents teach us sometimes to eat whatever and foods that are not really healthy for you with grease. But after grace educates you, you also look at the foods you eat without prohibition. It's a lifestyle that you eat better, right? But not because you forbid to. So then, prohibition is born. Notice where it's born out of. People may ask, doctrinal, doctrines of demons. That's ugly. Doctrines of demons. But what is a demon? A demon, it's a created soul. And a demon is not ugly. A demon is a creation as any angel. What happens is, before Jesus going to the cross of Calvary, the law uh, required abstinences of food. But look at where the doctrines of demons are born out of, from the same commandments of God, because notice that the law perfected nothing. Notice that Christ came to put an end to the law. What happens is that people think the law is good because it is good to behave. The law is good truly in its purpose, but since you are bad, what is good converts to something bad for you. The law is marvelous if you were a good person, but since you're not a good person, the law then condemns you. And that's where prohibitions are born out of. They are born for an example, look at what Paul says about the law. The law didn't perfect anything. Number two, Paul served God against the law. Why did he serve God against the law? Because if he served God with the law, he would preach demon doctrine. Because after the cross, to try to fulfill the law is to form doctrines of demons. This is, I know, is very controversial and people burn their brain trying to understand this because they think the law is good. Everything that God gives is good. But Paul says, leave the rudiments of the doctrine of Christ. And imagine the doctrine of Christ. How are you going to leave something like that? It was good before the cross, but after the cross, Christ convert into the utterance of demons. Well, before the law is when you had those the anomic spirits. But when Jesus died, that was destroyed. What you hear today about demons are works of the flesh, which is sorcery. It's a work of the flesh. It's not a spiritual work. 
It's sorcery. The experience of spiritualists, all of that that is done under witchery, it's done under the power of sorcery. Our flesh is, has tremendous spell attributes. And you are a spirit dwelling in a vessel of clay. We say, oh man, one day I saw a woman, uh, you know, she was dragging herself like a serpent on the floor. I saw things that were incredible. I saw a man one day jump in front of me, and when he fell, his leg, his bone broke. And I saw the bone sticking out of the sock like this, and I saw that. And then I looked again, and there was nothing. And I said, wait a minute. Well, and it was in the church that that happened because in churches, when when the people do not submit to the covenant of grace, God sends a deceitful power and it's optical. The eye, you swear you saw it and you really didn't see nothing because what God does is confuse your, your sight so you be confused. Well, when I disobeyed, when I disobeyed God, when I was a so-called Christian, when I was in legalism in the religious system, I remember that every night the pastor used to invite us to pray. And on Fridays, we would do great visuals and we would scream out, let the power of God come down. And we thought that that was good. Come down, Lord. Manifest Holy Spirit. So what happens? One day, there was such confusion that when I got home, I was listening, the outside of my window, someone was being crucified, and I would swear that he would scream with, as the nails were being uh, piercing his hands, and I was awake, I was listening to that, so then when I looked out the window, I would, I would give my head, knowing that that was taking place, but when I opened the curtain, it was nothing, and I said, wow, I'm going nuts. Now I'm really losing it. Something wrong is going on. And it's that I was going to a Pentecostal church and the Spirit of God, come down, come down. And we were looking for a revival. And when God sees all of that nonsense, God sends a power. I used to see a woman drag herself, which was the most spiritual woman in the church, drag herself as a serpent on the ground. And from that point on, I said, not everything that shines is gold. That's why those spiritual centers, there is all types of sorcery going on. And you swear you see things. The power of witchery in your flesh in the like manner that there are works of the flesh, such as jealousy. A person could have such jealousy that he can go and kill his wife, his kids, the jealousy in the flesh, witchery in the flesh is also a powerful source. Right now, no work of the flesh is manifest in you here. You are very calm here right now. But it doesn't mean that you don't possess the potential of homicide in your flesh. It is there are deceitful desires. That's why we teach not to believe the deceitful desires of your flesh because sometimes you wake up and you see everything is gray. Wow, life is terrible. I don't think I'm going to make it and nothing. When those thoughts come and you, if you bring them to captivity and say, I don't receive this. I know that this evening I will feel better. Tomorrow I will wake up in a different spirit. Exactly. The following day, you wake up in a different glory. What happened to me yesterday? I felt I was losing the battle. The flesh is deceitful. So then when a person begins to preach to the flesh, prohibiting the flesh, it's preaching doctrines of demons. When a leader begins to preach prohibitions, that's where the doctrine of demons are formed out of. I would ask myself, but why does Paul say preaching deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons? Go to a church and ask, what is prohibited here? And when they begin the list, list 
Arrivederci, I'm leaving because sooner or later I'm going to have problems. You got to leave people. The problem of prohibiting is that people fulfill because you prohibit it, but not because it's born out of him. So then prohibition, one of the fruit of prohibition is hypocrisy. That the church is full of hypocrites. Don't you see you prohibit so much that everybody that tries to fulfill your demands become members. It's good that hypocrisy doesn't find a place when you just let people be where well then we conclude that the law did not perfect anything paul served god against the law it says the law was a defective covenant god had to make a new and living way because it seems like the old way was no good christ put an end to the law why did christ put and then to the law, because that wasn't any good, because in a covenant of the Spirit, the law of Moses helps you with nothing, because the law of Moses is no other than a box of prohibitions. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not give false testimony. Don't, don't do this. Don't, those, those are prohibitions. That's where the doctrines of demons are born. And don't, don't do this, don't do that. That is prohibiting. It says, well, Paul told Timothy, listen, Timothy, these uh, tales of old ladies, don't hang around these people that follow genealogies that are endless. But that brings us problems. Well, this guy's from that tribe. He's from the other For whom was the law given? Let's see a list so you can see that the law is what causes these problems. The first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. Right there where we were reading, chapter 1, verse 9 says, Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous person. It wasn't made for what? The righteous, the seed of God. Sometimes I hear people here in Miami, there are many that defend the law. Those groups, uh, messianic groups, that's the same dog with a different leash trying to get Gentiles under the yoke of the law. You should watch all of that Judaism that is being preached in the name of in that uh, they've accepted the Messiah. It says, knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous person, but for the lawless and disobedience and the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy, for the profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for the fornicators, for the sodomites, for the kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and all of those that come against the sound doctrine according to the gospel of the glory of the blessed God, which with I was entrusted, oppose Paul's teachings is to oppose God himself. To oppose to the teachings of Paul is to fall, to be discredited, to blaspheme against the spirit of grace. Life is not going to go well for you. You're going to have crucial consequences. So then, we have to conclude that the problems that exist worldwide in Rome is for violating a principle. They prohibited to marry, the priest to marry, the Celibacy is a doctrine of demons. They don't speak it. They say, oh, you know, they, they sometimes vote on it, whether they should marry or not. So sometimes they don't get enough votes. Some 40% of them vote on it. But that isn't the problem. The problem is that that is a doctrine of demon. Celibacy, to prohibit someone to marry, it's not correct. A person, if he doesn't want to marry, that's fine. But to prohibit a person that wants to 
it doesn't suit them because that's going to bring problems as it has worldwide. We have to tell the people, Catholic, the Catholics, the government that the problem the Catholic Church is having now is not a problem of the leaders because they're saying, the Pope is saying, listen, live holy. But it's not that they're not living holy, it's that there's a prohibition and that prohibition places them in an, a spiritual disobedience and they are paying the consequences of that situation. So then, they prive women from marrying. But they don't only prive men, but the women also, that they cannot marry. And how many stories have, haven't we heard of temples where they have found fetuses by hundreds under the temples? History shows because of a false doctrine. And I know that God is allowing for this to happen so that that Roman Catholic system falls. It's going to fall. It's going to fall. It should fall because what that has caused is harm to the nations. All of that, you see that the victims, they say, well, I don't believe in the priest, nor do I believe in men, but I continue to believe the Catholic Church, in the Catholic Church. But that's what that is, the priests and all of the doctrines they, they formed. So I would like to conclude telling you that when you see a church that begins to prohibit that is the beginning of a doctrine of demons and the beginning of the great problems do not prive anybody even your children don't prohibit them of anything speak to them but prohibiting brings transgression God prohibited, notice that prohibiting is dangerous, that God waited to prohibit till the end because God knew that Adam was going to disobey. So he didn't prohibit before, he waited till the end until he began to execute his plan. Now, so he can sin, do not eat of, and that's when he immediately fell. Because prohibition is the beginning of disobedience. We have to be careful as to how we express ourselves, how we express our desires amongst family members or among our business and employees in all relationships. For an example, notice that there are people that have lost their first marriage and when they're going to remarry, the church prohibits them because of the prohibitions. In our case, imagine Jesus one day found the Samaritan woman with five husbands, and he didn't reproach her for having five husbands, but she was lying. For he said, it's okay, woman, you had five, but the one you're living with now is not. What's going on? But he helped her. He helped her. And we ourselves here in Growing in Grace, when a family comes in to our meetings that might have had an incident in their past and a divorce. Imagine, because that happens. And imagine when they want to reestablish themselves, they're prohibited to do so. Paul, the Corinthians would write to him and they would ask him these types of questions. So then Paul, look at what he says in chapter 7, verse 1. Look at what Paul says not to prohibit. He says, now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good. Listen, people would write to Paul. They would send him notes, right? Seems like they have many questions there. So then he says, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Look at what Paul says. It would be good, but what happens is that he says it, but in Verse 8, look at what it says. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is <clears throat> good for it to, uh, it is better not to marry 
or rather, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. But if they cannot exercise self-control, it is better to marry. The only one I know that exercised this gift was Paul. Paul says it would be good not to, but without the gift, I don't advise you that you stay single because you're going to enter into temptation. Because if you, if there's not the gift, then it's going to be the desire. So I think that this is uh, doctrinally, those of our ministry may understand me, but those that are not from our ministry may not understand this. The reason why the Vatican formed the doctrine of prohibiting their leaders to marry is because Peter, the first pope, heard that Paul had the gift of self-control. So he said, well, if Paul can do this, I'm going to prive everyone from getting married. Forming the platform for the destruction that itself. And it is now in our day, we're going to see the destruction of the platform of, the, of Catholicism well, Paul said it. it. It would be good for you to be as I am, but if you don't have the gift, if you don't have the gift, you're going to be burning yourself. You're going to be causing harm. I'm saddened. Their pastors work with religious groups. They've had problems with their wives or husbands. So then the denomination tells them you cannot remarry once they're divorced. So that's another type of prohibition. So then that man of God, that woman of God, that is being prohibited, and that's a problem because the person then, if they fall in love or has a desire to, they have to hide. And then they enter into hypocrisy and disobedience heard of many of those cases. See, here in Miami, sometimes I turn on the radio and I hear people that call say, oh, that I had a problem with my husband and we've separated. And the pastor says, but your husband is still alive? And they say, yes, yes, he, he left with another woman. Well, you can't be married because you commit adultery. They left her hanging and the husband went with another so now she wants to form her life and they say no 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 you can't that is a form of prohibit prohibition and it's that they misinterpret the bible because the bible says that man should be the husband of one woman well certainly well if he separated from one and he remarries the husband of one woman they interpret that one Woman only is one in a lifetime because they don't understand and they enter into prohibitions. So therefore, it is prohibited to prohibit. Do not prohibit because it can be worse. So we conclude that the doctrines of demons are born of the commandments of Moses himself, of the commandments that God himself exposed from there once after the cross when you begin to prohibit that's what we call doctrine of demon let's stand and tell he that's beside you it is prohibited to prohibit blessed with every spiritual blessing <laughs>
the spot and with the blemish you find his sacrifice With unspeakable words in indescriptible love You seduce me and convince me with your amazing words of grace That knowledge ain't hidden wisdom Honestly I never heard before That I am dead unto sin Perfect in him With the spot and with the blemish By his sacrifice Yeah! Magnify and glorify the Lord with me Let's take his praise to a higher glory Let's tell the world what he has done for you and for me predestined his love before any creation there is nothing in this world can revoke me from his love oh magnify and glorify the Lord with me let's take his praise to a higher glory let's tell the world of what he has done for you and for me we were predestined his love before any creation And there is nothing in this world can revoke me from His love. Now I know who I am. Where I come from and going to And his likeness I always made His perfection is me too Now I know who I am Where I come from and going to And his likeness I always made And his perfection is me too Oh magnify and glorify the Lord with me Let's take his praise to a higher glory The world of what he has done for you and for me We were predestined in his love Before any creation And there is nothing in this world That can revoke me from his love Oh, magnify and glorify the Lord with me Let's take this place to a higher glory Let's tell the world of what he has done for you and for me We're predestined in His love before any creation And there's nothing in this world that can revoke me from His love